It was reported that the sequel to Ferris Bueller's Day Off would eventually be released more than 30 years after the original film's debut. It centers on two minor characters and their own misadventures. The iconic 80s film starred Matthew Broderick as the titular truant who skipped school along with friends Cameron and Sloan. The spin-off will be directed by John Hurwitz and Josh Heald, with Bill Posley writing the story. Stay tuned for the latest. First up, what is the idea behind Ferris Bueller's Day Off spin-off? According to reports, the creators of Cobra Kai are planning to create a new spin-off based on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Cobra Kai, which transferred to Netflix for the third season in 2021, became immensely popular among subscribers, as almost everyone on the internet is aware. The series, which is based on the wildly popular 1980s film franchise The Karate Kid, follows Ralph Macchio's character, the original Karate Kid Daniel LaRusso, as an adult who is still being bullied by Johnny Lawrence from high school. The creators of the successful series are now tackling another 80s classic, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. According to reports, the directors of of Cobra Kai, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg, and Josh Heald are working on a new movie based on the comedic picture from 1986. The new movie is titled Sam and Victor's Day Off and centers on the valet employees who drove the Ferrari for fun in the first movie. The spinoff would take place on the same day as Ferris's disastrous expedition and will feature the attendants, who were initially portrayed by Richard Edson and Larry Jenkins, embarking on their own journey. The movie is reportedly being written by Bill Posley, and producer Paul Young is producing it through his business, Make Good content. On New Year's Eve of last year, the fourth season of their critically acclaimed show Cobra Kai debuted on Netflix. A fifth season will follow in September. In fact, the fourth season had already been published before the next had even begun filming. So what is Ferris Bueller's Day Off about? Most people don't know about John Hughes's movie, considering the fact that it's in the 80s. Almost all of John Hughes's movies are set in Chicago, but this is the only one where the third largest city in the country is integral to the plot. It includes scenes of reflection of the Art Institute of Chicago and the observation deck of the Willis Tower, as well as countless other B-roll montages of well-known landmarks. Other scenes include a Cubs Day game at Wrigley Field and scenes at the Art Institute of Chicago. The plot of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is renowned for being drafted in a matter of days in anticipation of an imminent writer's strike, is very straightforward. Favorite high school senior Ferris Bueller takes a day off from school to explore all that the Windy City has to offer. He enlists his neurotic best friend Cameron Fry and his cool girl equal Sloane Peterson. Ferris's only goals are to avoid being discovered discovered, have fun, and prevent Cameron from going crazy. However, the actor named Alan Rock claimed in a recent interview that a deleted scene explained why he chose to wear the jersey of the rival team. The scenario revealed that when Cameron was younger, his grandfather, with whom he had a wonderful relationship, used to take him to Detroit Red Wings games. Contrasting his frequently expressed views about his father with this relationship with his grandfather would have been helpful, but these distinctions did not need to be clarified. Next, is Ferris Bueller a figment of Cameron's imagination? Ferris Bueller's day off by John Hughes is one of those uncommon films that everyone seems to like. This classic tale of a senior in high school who would give anything to skip class and spend the day partying in Chicago with his best friend and girlfriend is brimming with innocence and tons of good, clean fun. That is until you take into account the Fight Club theory. There aren't many directors who can truly lay claim to an entire subgenre, but John Hughes may be one of them. Hughes, a classic late 20th century filmmaker, is credited with reinventing the coming-of-age movie with his tremendous body of work, which includes Sixteen Candles, Weird Science, and The Breakfast Club. Despite the fact that several of these movies have long been regarded as classics, many of them have aged poorly and still exhibit the attitudes of a previous era. Yet, Ferris Bueller's Day Off from 1986 is still incredibly endearing. Moving on, you are aware of David Fincher's adaptation of Chuck Palahniuk's first book, in which an unnamed narrator had a fortuitous encounter with the person he aspires to be, only to discover that this new, very perilous acquaintance was nothing more than a hallucination of his imagination? Apply that idea to the storyline of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but this time, make Ferris nothing more than a creation from Cameron's imagination. However, this upcoming spin-off isn't the only movie that Cobra Kai's producers are working on. There is also an upcoming season of Cobra Kai. And now, when is Cobra Kai Season 5 coming out? On September 9th, Cobra Kai Season 5 will be made available worldwide, exclusively on Netflix. During the Cobra Kai Live and Badass event at the Netflix is a Joke, the festival event in May 2022, the first teaser and the release date were made public. Ten episodes from the new season will be released at once. Months before the start of Season 4 in August 2021, Season 5 was already confirmed. Atlanta served as the location for Season 5's beginning of production in September 2021. A few months later, in December 2021, official filming came to an end. Co-creator of Cobra Kai, John Hurwitz, tweeted a confirmation that Season 5 filming was over. For Season 5, every major Cobra Kai figure will return. Daniel LaRusso is portrayed by Ralph Macchio. Johnny Lawrence is played by William 
Zapka. Amanda LaRusso is played by Courtney Hengler. Miguel Diaz is played by Zolo Medwea. Robbie Keane is played by Tanner Buchanan. Samantha LaRusso is portrayed by Mary Mouser. Hawk is portrayed by Gianni Desenzo. Carmen is played by Vanessa Rubio. Tori is portrayed by Peyton List. The cast still remains unchanged. Cobra Kai keeps emitting strong retro vibes. In season 5, Sean Kanan will return to the screen as Mike Barnes. One of Daniel's adversaries in the Karate Kid Part 3 was Mike. However, a new cast member named Alicia Hannah Kim will play Kim Dayun, a sensei from South Korea that Terry Silver recruits to aid in the growth of Cobra Kai's dojos. Despite rumors that Anae Roja has joined the cast, Netflix has not provided any information regarding her character. The Netflix series Cobra Kai has been jam-packed with big appearances by a ton of extra characters from the adored film trilogy, in addition to the primary Karate Kid performers. Julie Pierce, also known as Hilary Swank, is a name that keeps coming up. I frequently advise fans of the next Karate Kid to tune in to see if Julie Pierce, played by Hilary Swank, may make an appearance. Now the release of Season 5 is forthcoming. So, what will happen in Cobra Kai Season 5? Following the startling outcomes of the All Valley Tournament, Season 5 finds Terry Silver growing the Cobra Kai Empire and attempting to make his No Mercy style of karate the only game in town. It's likely that Daniel LaRusso will need the assistance of an old acquaintance because Chris is in jail and Johnny Lawrence has put his karate aside. Josh Heald and Hayden Schlossberg, the show's co-creators, added a post to Netflix. It involves Daniel and Johnny going to get all the support they can get to stop Cobra Kai in its tracks, as Terry Silver calls upon some old acquaintances to put the valley in a grip. This has stirred up a lot of reactions on the internet. However, Season 5 will feature a lot of insanity, as John hinted to fans in an interview. He said there would be a lot of karate and some familiar faces will likely show up. The evil guys prevailed in Season 4, so Josh said there will be hell to pay, whether there is more hellfire or retribution. Now, there are several individuals fighting and kicking one another, but the narrative will take a turn that no one can possibly predict. Thomas Griffith assured fans when he said they won't be disappointed after he discussed his potential return in Season 5. Hayden also stated that he could not wait for viewers to see the fist in Season 5. This is what happens when karate fights get out of hand. And finally, will there be more Cobra Kai seasons? Netflix hasn't actually given the go-ahead for Cobra Kai Season 6 yet. The showrunners do, however, intend to continue the program past Season 5. Showrunner John Hurwitz responded to a question from a fan asking if he was near to the end of Cobra Kai by saying that they expect more Cobra Kai to come and that the Miyagi-verse is far from over. However, a different fan claimed in a tweet addressed to John that there will be the sixth season of Cobra Kai. John claimed they were misquoted when they said there would be the sixth season, even though they frequently expressed their desire for at least six seasons. The Cobra Kai creative team already has an end in sight, according to Hayden, who spoke in an interview. He claimed that they don't know how many seasons it will take to get there, but they are having a great time creating it. He also said they will stop before the sixth season if it gets weary along the line, even though they already have plans for a couple more seasons. Given Cobra Kai's ongoing popularity on Netflix, a decision about the show's future shouldn't take long to be made by the streaming giant. Whatever the case is, do you think there will be a sixth season for the Cobra Kai series? We'd like to know your thoughts in the comment section. That's it, folks. You have made it to the end of the video. As regards keeping up to date with our news, kindly drop a like and subscribe. Oh, and turn on post notifications so you'll be the first to know when we drop a new video.